Okay, here's here's an artist that for ever since I had my composer lounge, uh, the decomposer lounge, everyone said I've got to do some music from this guy, and I've never gotten around to it. But heck, if he's made it to my Twitter, uh, David Maxim Misi Misis. So I do know that this gentleman is a uh, instrumentalist and a guitar player. So at least I'll have that going for me. Um, yeah. Okay. Double A. Yeah. I'm just looking at titles. I'm not really looking at who's putting it in there. I'm just titles and whether they're artists or games and stuff. But oh, this is a good recommendation. I, I'll fi I'll finally do one from this uh, composer. So let's do this. Uh, a bit of a s seven minutes. So let's settle in and let's do this. All right. Seven eight over four four, I think. Doesn't this sound like it could be a little chip tune bit? <laughs> Sink into it. As I lay in bed, I found myself thinking consecutively, and I thought. I love the, the use of his ambient light, synths in the background. That sense of nearness of God that sometimes comes into the stillness and the darkness. I stood my trial, my only trial for that moment of wrath and fear. Myself sitting up in bed, staring at the dark. You know, a lot of super slick metering going on throughout this whole thing, but what really is really pulling for me as how I listen to it is while there's this intense meter work that's going on, uh, most mostly led by the chunky, chunky and chugginess uh, guitar work, obviously with the drums and stuff, you find that a lot of the arpeggiations in the back is what's really keeping um, that zip line of what I would say more of a broader accessibility to people who might not be uh, that... Um, um, well seasoned at least listening to music that has a lot of meter flex in there so you'll still hear in a lot of the sequencing that's going on in the back plus I love how this composer is using uh, a lot of the pads to give me a little bit of, an, an, of a nice spaciness on this journey because when you're doing instrumental that's also what what the instrumentalist is doing obviously is writing their piece of work 
but it's um, uh, the response, the reaction that we listen to an instrumental piece, it's the journey that we get in our head. It doesn't all mean the same thing to different people. Some people say, hey, I'm flying through the universe. This is great. Some guys going, well, I feel like I'm, you know, drowning in lava or something. Everybody to each his own. But by the use of those ambient ethereal kind of paths in the backgrounds, it always just gives you that sense of like uh, a lucid journey, even though the meter in this is pretty... You know, so dig it. And suddenly that night became terrible. Great indeed. Look, look, look the sound of the snare. I like that with the guitar. Dream Theater, yes. Kind of vibe. Yeah. That drummer knows how to jerk that around real good. Respite here, they're giving us a chance to settle in. Ooh, that was nice. What a great guitar tone. Don't you hear that chip tune kind of vibe in the back here? Is this perfect for like a chip tune track? Giving us a little bit, uh, slowly pulling out the needle. I like that so much. To me, that, that shows uh, intention with the composer on wanting to take you on a particular journey. Uh, that's just how I feel about it, is when they do stuff like that and they bring us off like that and they close us off nicely, you know, I mean, there's fades, there's hard stops, all different ways to do it. There's not one way to do it. Uh, but I like in this composition uh, that intention, just let us go on the pads. Did you guys, I mean, I don't have a lot of experience and I'm still fairly ignorant on how many bands sound like, let's say, yes, or like a dream theater 
or something. So whenever I say, hey, it sounds a little yes, a little dream theater, it could be a dozen others as well, but because I'm not familiar with the bands, because I don't have that kind of uh, deep discography and listening, you know, I'll always say, well, and, and whenever I hear something as, as progressively composition as this, and then the second I hear keyboards, well, the, uh, you know, I'll think of Dream Theater automatically because Dream Theater is one of those bands that is just as affluent in making sure the keyboard has a good place in not only the mix, but in the arrangements and stuff. Um, that guitar solo was phenomenal. The, the, the guitar tones in this was incredible. There were some comments people were leaving here about the chunkiness and the cleanliness of it, which is something I've never learned to achieve on, on my tones and stuff because I'm not, you know, um, uh, I, I'm not uh, educated on how to do it. But um, that has a lot to do with uh, tone management and stuff like that. That's why those chunks sound so great when they're muted. You know, there's no clipping. There's no noise gate clipping that's going on there, if at all, and if there is any noise gate at all. Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't warrant it in the performance because it's not a overly saturated tone that might have a hangover buzz of a millisecond or something that might cause it to kind of slightly uh, lag in its space. The guitar solo tone was absolutely stunning, and on top of it, the <clears throat> the absolute met metronomic you know playing metronome style perfection of his playing was one thing, but so much so what made it more amazing is that he had a very vivid left and right delay over that solo and at the speed he was going in his 30 seconds on there um his his the perfection of timing on there was obvious in his delay it was a fairly long delay that he was doing that and if you're slightly off at that that kind of throws a little bit of a weird quirk in it it was perfect just perfect perfect <coughs> Now I feel bad that it's taken me two and a half years, almost three years, uh, to get to uh, a, a David Maxim, I'm going to say this wrong, mi, 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 I don't know if it's Misik mi, mi, or Mikik, I don't know, forgive me, I'm just trying my best. But now, yeah, I'm going to definitely have to dive deep in, into some discography there and uh, be influenced. It was, it was, I was coming up with some very unique things in my head melodically too with it. Great, great piece of work. Mitch, Mitchich, Mitchich. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that.